2022 yes. uh, Grand Designs Momentum 395 MS. Excited, we've had it on order for how long? Five months. Five months. Yeah. And it's finally in, we're going to pick it up. More to come. Here we go. You ready to roll? Well, we're all hooked up. Ready to roll for the first time. go towing it for the first time I don't know if you can see it back there nothing to see in the back window so <laughs> no, so we have only had bumper pull trailers and it's our first fifth wheel and it's a big one but uh, man it pulls really nice compared to a bumper pull um, haven't had to do any real maneuvering with it yet other than at the gas pumps but it was at a truck stop so that wasn't bad so uh, when we get home I'm just gonna kind of thread the needle when I back into our gate but that won't be a problem so and we, we have a backup camera but we haven't put it on yet you gotta do that you can do that this weekend maybe yeah too. yeah so anyway it pulls great um, and with even with our short bed dually which everybody said oh short beds are terrible but tell you what we got that uh, pull right super slide I think it's called super slide slider hitch and uh, thing pulls like a champ so what are the differences that you feel between that and the and a bumper pull it's just smoother I don't when I look out the mirror I don't see any swaying like we got with the bumper pull even though even with the dually or with the anti sway anti sway bar on the hitch um, I would still see a little bit of sway whether it be uneven roads or with wind and uh, I don't get any sway whatsoever on this one. It just really pulls nice. There's no wind right now, but, yeah. um, but I think it'll handle it a lot better. And a lot of people say how much better a fifth wheel yeah. pulls than a than a bumper pull. So so far, really good. Well, so here it is. Got it home, and um, do a quick little video of what it's like with the slides in. Okay, so one of the, the downfalls, I guess, is that when the slides are in, you can't get into the fridge. Um, you've got to put the slide out. You can get into the freezer, whoop, <laughs> except for that light up there. Um, not that you'd want to be doing that too much, but you absolutely cannot get into the fridge. So you can, underneath in, passenger side propane compartment there's these two dials right here they're not marked but one runs the passenger side and one runs the driver's side slide because you can't do them individually at the switch so I'm gonna have to put a label figure out which one is which and label them so basically I could close one and hit the switch and just the driver's side would would go out so I could access the fridge um, you know, is that a big deal? Eh, not really. But, um, you know, you, if you're driving down the road, and better to maybe want to get something out of the fridge rather than stop and have to buy it at a store. So, but uh, the bedroom, you can access everything. I've got everything shut off, though, and I've got the battery disconnect off. It's probably... That'll be better. Uh, as you can see, we were kind of actually, the bedding's all messed up because we were measuring the sofa or the mattress. We were thinking of replacing that. But that slide does come in, but you can still, you could still crawl in bed and take a nap. Not a problem. As well as, you know, if you needed to, you could use the bathroom. Uh, couldn't 
eh, you could probably squeeze into the shower, but why would you want to? So anyway, so there it is. The lighting, I've got everything closed off, but let me go into the garage and the garage is obviously intact with the slides in. I was thinking about replacing these with the keyless. We'll see. So, still kind of a mess from our last trip. Uh, so you can, you've got all access to everything in the garage. And, but of course, the slides in and that's as far as you can get into the main cabin. Because this is the only outside storage compartment. And as you can see, it is small. And that's one of, if I have two complaints, I guess, it would be uh, not being able to access the refrigerator when the slides are in and the size of this storage compartment. So I've got, it's kind of a mess here too. I've got a tool bag, this little box of tools here, um, and then our power cord. So what I have, and what I had in our old trailer that I was able to store in outside storage are these two containers. One being our fresh water stuff, and then the other one our sewer stuff. So yeah, those can be fine. Those are fine in here. Um, and then when we go to our campground, I'll just move them outside and slide them under the, under the unit. But uh, so I don't know, we'll see. These, I don't know what I'll do with. They're not bad out here. These are just the folding chairs that go out on the patio. They're fine out here in the garage, or I could put them up in the uh, little cubby area that's, I don't know what kids would ever sleep in there, but um, it is what it is. Basically, I think people just use it for storage. So then this other chair that you have to take the couch apart to bring the slides in, one of them is at the dinette. So we put one here at the dinette and strapped it down and then we strap these two chairs down. What we're thinking we'll do is we'll bring that other couch piece over, strap it here, and I think these are supposed to fold up somehow because they said that there's two more of these chairs and they're folded up under the um, the bed. We haven't got those out yet. So if that's the case, maybe we'll fold them up and stick them off to the side somewhere so we don't have to carry the couch section out there. I was thinking of just laying the couch section on top of that side and strapping it down. I haven't really figured out how to strap it yet. I just, I didn't want it to make permanent indentations in the upholstery. So, so I don't know. That's something we're still working out. We've only been in this, slept in it one night briefly after we got it. So these are just the things I've learned in the short amount of time we've had it. Um, so next I will get some footage of it fold it out and um, let you know what we think. So now let's let's have a tour of the inside as soon as this bee gets out of the way. <laughs> Ooh, I hit him. Okay, hey Mario. Okay, so here is the inside tour of the 395 MS. And you guys, people have probably already seen this online by now. Um, so I'll give a quick rundown um, pros and cons that we've found so far. This is our first, this is our, we've had been in it two nights now. So it's kind of our, our real first official trip because we're going to be in it three nights. Um, we did get four chairs for the dinette. Two of them are folded up under the master bed. So um, just since it's the two of us, we just left the two chairs out. Um, these things I've found so far, these windows, they only open that far. I mean, which is enough, I guess. These end ones slide up all the way, but uh, just, you know, love the windows. You get such good daylight in here. Um, and as far as the seats, um, these are fine. The, um, the heat button, it's kind of hard to tell when it's on and off. It does get a little bit brighter, but um, it's hard to tell when it's off. The light obviously will light up around inside the cup and then under the floor, the front there. And then the vibration is, uh, it's just, a, or massage, it's just a very slight vibration. Um, definitely not really a massage. Uh, let's see here. We, it was pretty cool this morning, so we had the fireplace going. And that worked great. Puts off a lot of heat. And one thing we learned that um, 
we weren't totally aware of is these two it does become a bed we haven't folded it out yet but i lifted up the covers and found that out we didn't weren't informed of that in the walkthrough um and then these i know this one also has the light and i noticed a little light bar under that one but there's no switch so after kind of researching it a little bit, there is a little plug, a round plug in the back of that one. I just need to find out where to plug it in. And then I think it probably will run off this power button. I don't know if it has heat or massage as well yet, but I'll figure that out. Um, but the kitchen, I don't know any complaints about the kitchen yet. It doesn't have a ton of storage. Yeah, there seems like there'd be a little bit more storage. I mean, just from our, our other trailer or striker seem to have a little bit more i mean we've got enough we're just adjusting and adapting putting stuff where we're figure, figuring we can put it but um love the fridge that's a double the size fridge from what we had in our other other rv so no complaints there um it seems like there would be more switches for lights the weird thing is there's there's one under here which does kind of the main lights and then there's one here right as you walk in the door. So if you were to come in at night or something, you could hit this switch. And that turns on just this little one right up here on the ceiling, which is fine. Then you can see, um, you find your way around. And then this one on the stairs is a motion activated. So whenever you walk through here, it turns on that little light stair. So that's kind of cool. Other than that, there are no light switches. So the only way to really operate the lights are through the control panel or the app on your phone. Um, the app on your phone works great, but it does take almost, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds to connect and then, uh, and then you can do it fine. And then of course the garage area, this is our first time kind of using it for an actual garage. So today or at some point on this weekend, we're gonna, um, I obviously had the ramp down to get the bikes in, but we're gonna, try setting up the patio. It's just a little hard because at this campsite, we have to park behind the trailer. And so we'll have to make sure the truck's backed up enough and then we'll try the um, try the deck. And we haven't used the bathroom back here yet. And I don't think any, any real complaints back here yet. There is a light switch. There's a whole bunch of switches going on here, but there is one ceiling light and that's right there. I don't know what the auxiliary light is yet, but then there's porch light, scare light, which is the very back, very back of the unit. And then the awnings, um, I don't know. One is probably the very back awning over the deck. And then maybe this back one, I don't know. So we're still learning. So anyway, um, that is basically it for I don't know any any more pros or cons that you can think of. Um, the oven is a full size oven. That's that is terrible, honey. That sucks. <laughs> Which I can actually cook, put a cookie <laughs> sheet. In there. Yeah. Before I could even. The oven is full size. Oven is decent size, yeah. That's a full size oven. It's very different from our striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice place, and you've got a lot of plug-ins. So for your coffee make coffee maker, we chose to put ours here. There's plugs there, and plugs up there, and also some one right there, and then one on the other side of the couch for plugging in your your couch when you're setting up. So I think that's about it for now. And then of course you do have to move. These, I think we talked about that, or people know that you do have to separate these two sections and tie them down when you're when you bring in the slides. We'll maybe do a quick video of bringing in the slides when we when we're packing up. You yeah, got the front of the, yeah, yeah. So that is it for now. More to come later. All right, we just returned from our basically first official trip get this opened up but what we took with us this time were two dirt bikes and two mountain bikes and I use my bolted-on system 
which if you look at my channel, I have a review of that system and I love it. So as you can see, there is room, nothing is rubbing together the way, uh, the way I have it set up. So I'm going to unload this stuff and then see if I can fit our four seated side by side in here. Well, we'll, uh, fingers crossed. One other thing that's kind of a pain with this when you're loading your toys is if you're not either completely level or in this case I've got a side wind coming from left to right so if you open all these up they'll just kind of close on you and uh, you don't want to it was doing it worse earlier today so my remedy is this now this unit came with a whole bunch of these straps and they can be used for either tying luggage or chairs or whatever down either on your tie downs uh, you can use them up front to tie down your sections of couches but there's quite a few of them that are just loose so i use this luckily so far it's always been on this side but i wrap it through the little door handle here to the ladder and that helps hold it open if it was the wind if the wind was coming from this way uh, there's nothing nothing really over here to strap it to I guess I could use a few of them a couple of them together maybe and go to the door handle right here but um, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get to it all right well I got it all completely unloaded but the wind started shifting directions so as I mentioned before I went ahead I needed three of these straps and I ran them to the door handle to hold that open so that when I try putting my side by side in they don't accidentally shut on me and I do any damage to them so so let's see if it'll work all right well I did the side by side test and if you go to my channel you can see a separate video that I did for that of whether or not the four seated razor by Polaris fits and um, it's time to wrap this video up we have had this now a few months no a couple months and we've been out in it about five times and not real lengthy the the longest time was maybe four nights um, then we've had a couple three nighters and a couple two nighters so um, here is my take um, basically I guess the only issues we've had we'll talk about that first and foremost the slides make me nervous when they go in and come out um, I don't know if nervous is a, <laughs> is a good word or um, unnerving but when the slides go they they really angle like it starts going and it'll like lay back and then go and then once it gets to the end it'll straighten up and I'll show you an example of that I believe that one will go first so let's do that one and I don't know if you can tell by the angle of it uh, going let's see See, it kind of leans forward at the top. See, it's kind of leaning, leaning. Now it leans back, wobbles a little bit, and then tightens up. And this one does the same. It's leaning forward in the top a little bit. This one's not doesn't look as bad. Then it acts like it's gonna fall out, and then it straightens up there so it's it's weird for sure I might uh, I'm gonna be going in the next few days to have some uh, some things checked out and have our forever warranty inspection done to keep the warranty going and I'll ask them about that the slide in the bedroom doesn't do that it's just all flat vertical and it goes out fine so anyway that's one of the the things that's really unnerving um, so what we learned in our travels oh hey Mario is we like to strap the two sections of the L couch here and then I'll put our two chairs that don't fold up I throw them up here in the loft they ride well there and then the two that fold up Oh. 
are here under the bed. We've had them out once and I kind of tried to put the plastic back over them just to protect them because we do put duffel bags and things uh, with cycling gear or whatever under here. But those are the two chairs. The extra chairs, they obviously fold up, which is pretty handy. Those are the little legs for the table that goes to the very back in the garage if you wanted the two bench seats with the table in the middle. The table top is strapped to the top of the, um, on the top bunk. And I learned that when we brought it down. Another one very important thing we want to do, we opted for the king size mattress. And as you can see, it's a really weird shape. It's kind of rounded in the corner, which isn't that big of a deal. And then right about there, it starts angling at an angle in here. So you can't just get a regular square mattress and have it fit. So, because that would be the corner and it would kind of come across right about like that. It's really weird. So we did find out that Mattress Insider, they do make RV mattresses and you can do a custom mattress. And I'm gonna order one this winter and I will show you that, um, show you that process uh, maybe this winter when we do it. It's not cheap, but this mattress is terrible as most stock RV mattresses are. So we're going to get a new one. Another issue that we'll have addressed is this blind. And see, this is minor. This isn't like not really quality control on Grand Design's um, fault, but um, this blind it doesn't go up. I don't know if it's not mounted very, very well. It's just really wrinkled and it doesn't retract very well. Although that time it did pretty good. But I don't know if you heard it when I pulled it down, it made a real bad wrinkling up noise. So I'm going to have that one replaced if we can. Um, another thing I did find out was when you travel, I would suggest putting the blinds up because they're just they're just sitting here floating and so when you're traveling they're going to be flopping around and banging so when we travel we like them in the, oh, there see there it goes it doesn't go up very well when we travel we like to put them in the up enclosed or closed position so that they don't bang around now another quick thing that we kind of learned sometimes this door catches it's weird i gotta look maybe if that striker plate needs to be adjusted but Anyway, when we travel, um, we like to have our folding chairs. These are momentum ones that came with the trailer. Um, it was an option accessory we, we opted for. But I usually stack them right here on the floor. And, and I might put one of those straps, those black straps that it came with, through that around the chair so they don't go sliding around when we travel. Um, and then, of course, I showed you those two bins for the water and sewer stuff. And, um, and then just extra stuff, a bucket. Um, Stuff like that. So when we have our bikes and stuff back here, then things aren't sliding around. I just lay this ladder down because this is a ladder I need to get the chairs out of the loft up there. Other than that, um, I try and keep this wide open so nothing flies around. And then we'll put like our little portable um, barbecue fire pit back here. And I mean, nothing flies, slides around on this floor, but you have a lot of tie downs available to fasten them if you need to, if you're going long distances or on a really bumpy road or something and although this one i'm embarrassed to say but i put it out there um make sure when you are wrapping everything up and you you know make sure this this table leaf is in the down position when you bring the slides in and another thing make sure your refrigerator and cabinet doors are all completely closed and the reason why i say i'm embarrassed to do that because look at this this middle drawer was out. I think it was, I think it was just like that. It just wasn't quite shut all the way. So when the slide came in, the uh, handle, the slide caught this handle and just shoved and just shoved the handle and just completely destroyed the drawer. It still works fine and it closes and latches like it should, but um, so we're gonna look at uh, getting that fixed. I'm embarrassed to say it, but well, hopefully my mistake will help some of you guys not make the mistake that I did. Um, and that's, that's it for that.
one other issue we had this is the little outdoor um, shower valve that you just hook a hose to and then you have a little spray hose well there's a little rubber um, washer right there that sprung a leak and we just noticed this door was closed so we just noticed water or my wife noticed water dripping opened the door and it was just spraying out so I had to remove these four screws pull it out obviously turn the water off because there is no valve to this and uh, I took the line off and it's just female threads I got a little PVC male plug and screwed it in and I'll have the uh, um, have the the dealer fix that so that's kind of the only real problem we had as far as a water leak or anything like that one other little thing it's minor but it still bugs me these little feet that come down you're supposed to be able to just press this little lever and the feet just slide right down into place which the right one works fine but the left one sticks and so i have to hold the lever in and manually by hand pull that little leg down it's not that big of a deal but i don't know when you pay this much for an rv you want everything to work so i'm going to have that addressed as well and the final last complaint i have is these doors both the man doors shut really bad um you know really hard you really got to push it from the outside hard and i know you kind of want them to be a good positive close but it's really hard for people from the inside because this little handle right here is plastic and i mean you gotta you know you can't just pull it like that so you can you can kind of get the lever started and then really pull hard to latch it or just simply do it like that but either way it's not good so i was going to try and adjust this striker plate a little bit but the screws are stripped they um i went to loosen them up and i just kind of adjusted this see it's actually got a little play now because i can't tighten that screw anymore because it's stripped so i'm gonna have them address that and that is it so to wrap everything up that is basically it um the only other downside and i knew i knew it going into this is just the <laughs> the size of this thing we are we can't go everywhere that we'd like to go just because there's some places that either won't allow us in or we just can't get into so that's something to definitely be aware of but other than that um couldn't be happier this thing is so comfortable i mean it's literally a, a home away from home so uh thumbs up